Well, in five days, 17 hours, 28 minutes, and 26 seconds from when this video was made, Windows XP is going to end. <whistles> Done. Dead. Well, what does this mean to you? If you have a Windows XP, is it going to suddenly stop working? How do you fix the problem, and what does this mean to you? Is it unsecure? Those questions I'll try to answer on this edition of the Guru Brew. So hang out for XP death. Well, that's right. You know, I really became a real big fan of XP when it came out in 2002. That was 12 years ago. And I still have some XP's here in the shop that I'm going to have to upgrade. We'll get into that in a minute. But uh, it's been a good operating system. And I think since XP came on, it interested a lot of people. And it was very simple to use. And I think it, it really is what took the computer generation off, if you will. At least it did for me. You know, before XP came on, Windows 98, it, it was very similar to XP in the way that it worked, but it wasn't as intuitive and easy to pick up. XP brought video and new things like MP3s to the forefront of using computer, and that's really what made things popular for it. And you know, they've been tweaking it, and now we're at Windows 8, and you know, they changed the look and feel of it, and people are resisting it big time. You know, Windows 7 is really the way to go as far as um, Microsoft products right now. More on that later. But you know, XP was supposed to have been done several years ago. And it's been 12 years now, and they just are not going to do it anymore. What they're going to do is they're going to quit supporting it. And this means that you're not going to get any Windows updates if you're using Windows XP. And that will keep you open to viruses and threats on the Internet that you normally wouldn't get if you had protection. Not only that, but Windows support is also going to end for the family of 2003 server editions and Office 2003. So if you have any of those products, they will also be done on April 8th. The reason why the death of Windows XP is going to really happen is because they are just tired of supporting it. And really, any computer that was from the 2002 era is usually so slow now that it can barely run modern web pages and applications anyway. Windows XP was never really meant for the high-speed internet arena. When it was born in 2002, broadband was available but rare to have. And it wasn't until 2004, 2005 when it became more mainstream. So XP was built for phone modems where you actually used to use your little AOL modem and do 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 do. And uh, it was a different time. And now with the speed of the internet, you know, it's easy to put a virus on somebody's computer if you know what you're doing. Back before the high speed, it really wasn't practical to give viruses and that sort of thing because once the computer was disconnected from the phone line, the internet connection was lost. A lot of hackers like to use other people's computers to do their dirty work. And if people leave their computer on, it's always connected to the internet and it's easily controllable. Anyway, the bottom line is XP was really never made for the high-speed internet. So what Microsoft had to do for the last 12 years is give three major updates to it, as well as tons of patches. 
if you've ever upgraded in a Windows XP machine, you know that you got to take Service Pack 1, 2, 3, and then you have hundreds of other updates to cover everything from hardware to icons on your screen to help keep it protected. Not just working, but also to keep it from being as vulnerable for attacks and viruses. Now that Windows 8 has come to the front of touchscreen, they expect you, really, if you go on the Microsoft site, they expect you to go to Windows 8. And I really can't sit here and say comfortably that I think Windows 8 is here to stay. I think Windows 8 is not here to stay, and I think that it's going to be replaced, hopefully, soon with a Windows 7 looking interface to it. I just can't see Windows 8 working out. There's too much resistance. With that being the most modern operating system of, it, of today, Windows 8, that's really what they expect you to upgrade to. And if you have a Windows XP computer, chances are it's going to be like a Pentium 3 machine. You're going to have like 512 mega RAM, maybe one gig. And the hardware is old. And to upgrade that old machine with those specifications to a Windows 8 is just impossible, really. You'd have to upgrade the hard drive, the memory, the motherboard. I mean, all you would really have left of anything would just be the case and the power supply. Right down to the motherboard would have to be changed. So it doesn't make sense to upgrade an old computer from XP, even if it was a good XP machine, all the way up to 8. I just wouldn't do that. I would, however, consider taking it to Windows 7 if you have the hardware for it. The only way you're going to know if you have the hardware for it is go to your computer's manufacturer website, look up your model and see what they say about updated drivers for Windows 7. I would skip Vista altogether. Vista was really always a flaky operating system in my opinion. And I just wouldn't take any computer from XP to Vista. I know people that paid $100 to downgrade from Vista to Windows um, XP. But I just wouldn't put Vista on a XP machine. I would either take it from an XP machine all the way up to a Windows 7, or I would just replace it. That's really the bottom line in my opinion. If you want to take it to Windows 7 and your hardware is capable, you're going to have to buy Windows 7 software and that's going to run you a little over $100. So it may be practical to go ahead and break down now and spend, you know, $400 on a, a modern computer that has if you can find it, Windows 7, or if you get, you feel adventurous, go ahead for the 8. Anyway, that's really the two choices. So, if it's going to cost me $125 to upgrade a XP to a Windows 7, even if I had a really good video card, let's say I had 2 gig of RAM in it, I had a really past Pentium, Pentium dual core. Yeah, it might be worth the 125 and then wait for the next Windows, like Windows 9. Otherwise, I think I would go ahead and just take the extra money, the extra couple hundred bucks, and put it into a lower price computer until the new operating system came on. That's just my opinion. Your computer is going to still work, okay? If you have an XP right now and you don't see this video or you just ignore it and just keep using it, after the 8th of um, April here, it's going to still work. It's still going to turn on and everything's going to be normal. But you might start noticing it slow down and eventually just get so clogged up with stuff and you can't control it because the guys, the hackers that have been waiting silently in the background, they've been waiting for XP to end, in my opinion. And I think after the 8th, they're going to launch some viruses, and you won't be able to get rid of the viruses because XP is supported no more, and there will be no patches. So 
at that point you'll have to just reinstall XP or just forget it so you know really there's not a lot of choices here I would seriously consider purchasing a new machine at this point if you're still using XP if you cannot afford one you can always there's several things you can do you can switch operating system Microsoft products all together and go with something called Linux chances are if you're using an XP machine you've never used Linux before and if you have you'll know if you like it and then you don't have to follow this advice but I will tell you that there are several distributions of Linux that are very similar in looks to XP but it's still Linux and the programs that you purchased for your Windows machine will not work with the Linux machine. If you are still interested in looking at some Linux products, I can give you some names. Um, there's Mint Linux, which is all right. There's Ubuntu, and there's Zorin OS. And Zorin OS looks a lot like Windows. In fact, it has a built-in interface that you can switch between the looks of Windows. You can make it look like XP, you can make it look like Vista. So you can actually change the look of the Linux. Other than switching to Linux, I, you know, and the program incompatibility problem, if you're not liking change, and that's probably the reason why you are using XP now, you're probably not going to like Linux, to be quite honest with you. So, you know, think about, you know, purchasing or switching to 7. Okay, now if you're rock solid on not changing and you say, I don't have the money for it, I'm not going to upgrade to, you know, Ubuntu or whatever, at least do a couple things to your computer now to protect yourself as best as you can. And some of those things that you can do to your XP to limp it along for now and keep it going as long as possible. The first thing you have to do is go into the user settings and make your account so you're just a regular user. And get rid of the administrative account off your uh, account that you use all the time for your computer. What happens is... Most people are always the administrator of their computer, and you can check that by going into the control panel and then going to users and groups. Look and make sure that you're just a regular user because administrative privileges on an account don't question you and just go ahead and make changes. And if somebody's hacking you, they look like you, the administrator, and they can make those changes without the computer questioning them. So number one, limit or downgrade your administrative account on your computer down to a regular user that's one thing you can do another thing that you should do is uninstall flash adobe flash adobe reader shockwave if you have that and java and just go into the add remove programs and completely get rid of them okay what happens is those are third party applications that use the internet and older versions of those will not be supported as well and that's a well-known way of getting in computers that don't belong to you that hackers use so make sure you get rid of those programs something that you should definitely do if you're going to stick with XP is get a third-party browser get rid of Internet Explorer and don't use it anymore Internet Explorer on an XP machine only goes up to version 8 and that will be ending support as well so don't use Internet Explorer anymore install something like Chrome or Firefox I like Firefox and along with Firefox or Chrome you'll get helper applications such as Java and Flash and those will be updated because they work with the browser but get rid of those other ones that are in the add remove program first okay like I said earlier and really with those few steps and you know be careful on the internet you will be better protected than nothing at all and that I don't recommend going this way but if there's you know, you're just going to stick with XP no matter what. At least take these measures. 
So I hope that this explained a few things. Let me check my notes and make sure I didn't miss any more. Okay, one last thing that I wanted to mention about with um, XP being done is also Microsoft Security Essentials, a, the free virus program that a lot of XP users use, will also not update. And um, it'll still take definitions, but it won't be catered to XP. So that's another problem where you're going to get virus protection. Okay, guys. Well, I hope this made sense about the XP. It's really not a ploy to get your money in the end. This is something that really needs to be done. XP needs to be put to bed. It's just not a secure operating system anymore. And at some point, it has to go. I, too, am going to miss it. I've got some machines that I've got to prepare before Tuesday, and I plan to do so because I really realize the risk of even leaving one of them on my network. You know, if I have one XP machine on my network, I say, you know, I just use it occasionally, and I, I don't even surf the web with it, so it'll be okay sitting in the corner. Well, you know, if that machine does get infected, that can go through my whole network and affect my other machines, too. So it's it's something you want to do is, is switch out the XP machines and just be done with it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Stay tuned for more. I've got some more planned. I'm going to run a whole string of them here. And uh, make sure you subscribe for those as well. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hey, guys. This is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. And be sure to rate and comment. See ya.